Hello my friends and welcome back. Today I'm going to have a tutorial on how to use different kinds of fountain pens and I was inspired to do this after I lent one of my fountain pens to one of my friends and unfortunately the nib did not have a good day after that so I decided to take upon myself to make this tutorial on how to use a variety of fountain pens and how to use them appropriately. This is mostly going to be a beginner's tutorial, but if you have some experience using fountain pens, you may see some benefit by watching this. What I have done is I have separated my fountain pens into three to four categories. I categorize them as the hard nib fountain pens, which is the likes of Platinum Preppy and many of the steel nibs that are around in the market that are very affordable. The next category of fountain pens is the ones with soft nibs and that includes the likes of many many pelicans with gold nibs, Sailor King of Pen, many of other sailors with 21 karat gold, Leonardo's with gold and titanium nibs and the Pilot gold nibs, especially the custom Roshi that has a softer nib. The third category will be fountain pens with uh, the truly flexible nibs and that includes the likes of Pilot FA nibs, this ever sharp with a vintage full flex nib, this Conklin Endura with a fully flexible nib and such. So we're going to go through how to use these correctly so that we don't destroy the nibs. The last category of fountain pens I'm going to go through on how to use is very special and that's the one with very very fine tips including the dip calligraphy nibs uh, you can I guess put those in this category as well but this includes such pens as very very extra extra fine ultra extra fine from platinum this is an Omos extra that I had ground to a needle point so this is a 0.1 mill millimeter needle point grind so I'm going to go through how to use these appropriately in order to ensure longevity of these nibs and also to enjoy writing with them. So why don't we start with the hard nib and we'll go through how to use them appropriately. What I'm going to go through today are for, based on my experience. So your experience may vary, especially if you have a lot of experience with the fountain pens. So I would love to hear from others to see uh, how they would modify my instructions and hopefully I learned some in the process as well. So let's start on this end and we'll start with the fan favorite Genhao 9019. This has a fine nib and as we know the fine still fine nibs on Genhao 9019 is very very nice and they're smooth. Their extra fine nibs are just as fine as good and we can have a short tutorial on how to use them. So many, so many of the users that just enter the fountain pen world come from ballpoint pens or rollerball pens. The rollerball pens are designed so that you can write from basically any angle and they will give you a line. So very, very easy to use, but not as enjoyable if you ask me. So if you come from that world and you would like to use a fountain pen, what you would be inclined to do is our usual grip our usual grip, the most common that we see, holding the pen with your index finger and then grabbing it for dear life. And many of us, I've found my six-year-old do the same. So what we want to do is we basically go at it. And the roller ball and ballpoint pens, they do a very good job when you push on it. Um, so you see that the steel tip pen does a very good job. It does well in taking, putting ink on the paper. So the advice that I can give for using these fountain pens is that if you are just getting into fountain pens, get one of these. Get a hard steel nib or a hard, hard uh, gold nib, if you will. My number one recommendation, like many others, would be to get a Platinum Preppy. They're very cheap and very, very reliable and put the cartridge in, the cartridge in these with the 0 0.3 millimeter tip is enough to last somebody 
enough time that they will decide whether or not they want to continue with the fountain pen um, life. So what you want to do is, the advice I, to new fountain pen users is to, instead of having a straight up and down perpendicular approach angle to the paper, just have a little bit of a drop in the angle. You can still push the nib on the paper if you'd like with the steel nibs and the harder nibs. You're welcome to do that and they will give you, they would put ink on the paper. And if you compare this to a ballpoint pen, over time you'll realize that it's much easier to get ink out of a fountain pen than it is to get out of um, a ballpoint or even a rollerball pen. Many, many of the reputable fountain pens, such as the Platinum Prippy, have a very good reputation on not skipping. So I would definitely recommend one of these. And what you want to do is drop your angle from 90 degrees to around 45 degrees and start writing. So what you want to do is get used to this angle and that's the only modification that you need. You can press on the paper if you would like to, if you have a heavy hand like I did when I started writing with fountain pen. You can feel free to do that. The pen and ink are gonna do just fine and the pen is going to survive that. And over time, what I can advise you is uh, to try to decrease the pressure on the paper especially with the cheaper papers, it's going to collect the fibers and the pen can eventually start skipping. You can see this is the dreaded base state blue ink. It's such a beautiful shade of blue. Unfortunately, it feathers on everything. So that would be the advice. Whichever one of these pens you pick up, you can write just as well with a little bit of dropping the angle of writing. Many of the fountain pens don't do well with reverse writing, so feel free to experiment that. If you want thinner lines, you can do that, and many of these pens can write, but the appropriate way would be to have the pen at a 45 degree angle. You don't have to have it straight, like the tines equal pressure. You can have these at an angle, as long as you don't press hard enough to scratch the page. So that's my advice on using the harder nibs. Uh, that brings us to using the soft nibs. And this is a challenge for many of even not newcomers to the fountain pen world. What we have here, let me start with the Pelican, is a Pelican in 1005. It has a beautiful 18 karat nib. And if you press on this, it actually flexes pretty good. The problem is that this nib is not made to flex. It's a soft nib made to enjoy writing with, but it's not made to flex or provide any kind of line variation, really. Many people will tell us that this is a semi-flex pen. The best example I can think of a semi-flex nib is the Pilot Falcon, and even the FA nibs, uh, the FA number 15 is more of a semi-flex nib. And if you look at the Mont Blanc 146 and 149, they are semi-flex nibs. And um, the noodlers they have, I would consider a semi-flex nib because it doesn't really flex easily unless you put a good amount of weight behind it. So the, many of these gold soft nibs are there for riding pleasure and not for line variation. Let me demonstrate. So this is a Pelican and then I wanna write A, B, see you can see that if i press it will the time will spread and this pen is made to do that unfortunately it's not made to do that repeatedly because the times will splay and then 1000 nibs are notorious they're really almost impossible to repair back to the original shape so my advice for using these would be in addition to what we did for the steel the, the hard nibs, we want to keep the angle around less than less than 80 degrees. Around 45 degrees is a good angle. The next thing we want to do is, for these nibs, you want to minimize the pressure you put on the page. And do not 
do not press when you go up absolutely don't and when you go down don't be tempted to flex the nib and call cause line variation as tempting as it might be what these nibs are good for which i will demonstrate with the leonardo is letting you accent your writing for example i want to write a g at the end of the g i want to go like this that's fine but what i like to do with the softer nibs is you can just press here on top and then just go like that so it gives you a little bit of flair to your writing without really pressing too hard and causing splaying of the nib so that's what these soft nibs are good for they're basically good finishers f for example s d so on top you press and just flare it down like that you can get beautiful gradient of line variation without really destroying the nib so you don't want to go really hard but you can cause a little bit of flaring and will give a little bit of accent to your writing and i find that is very beautiful the other pen that can demonstrate this very well is the, the pilot so again we write a g the same it can give you a nice flare you cannot really do this with the harder steel nibs because they don't give you much line variation so those are the soft nibs how about full flex nibs so uh, the soft nibs before i move on we still have the same principles that you do not press when you're going up. Pretty much these nibs and these pens, like many of fountain pens, have to write under their own weight without me pressing on them. If you have a pen that you need to press upwards, press to get uh, get a line when you're uh, having ups and upstrokes, that is. A problem that needs to be addressed uh, but we we'll, can talk about that some other time which brings us to the full flex nibs this is an ever sharp so with the flex nibs it's a little bit different principles like we discussed earlier remain the same and you don't want to go straight up and down with these pins especially you don't want to go up and down because the the tines will separate and they will much much more easily compared to the other pens get out of sorts and they're hard to repair once they get out so because they are made to flex so they will they will distort out of the place for you but if you do this repeatedly then they can get out of alignment and with the flex pens it's really hard to put them back together so with the flex nibs in addition to the soft nibs and hard nibs what you want to do is again upstrokes need to be under the pen's weight you should not put pressure on upstrokes if you have to that's a problem with the pen that needs to be addressed when you want to get line variation with these flex nibs basically they're made to provide line variation you should only press these nibs on the way down on the way down basically the opposite direction from the nibs um, dorsal aspect so again going straight down you should not you should try to not put pressure on the nib going sideways and absolutely not going upwards so the only time that it's really safe to put pressure on the nib is around when they're going vertically down that's the safest time so how do you know how much to press different nibs are made to flex different amounts but you should try not to push them past their intended point for example my blanc pins will tell you they have a diagram telling you how much to push what i've learned is that if you put them if you want to flex these nibs the best way to do that is when you go up stroke down strokes put it around 30 degrees not 45 degrees 30 degrees and then flex it that way 
that way the feed will do a little bit to alert you that you're going too far so if the nip touches the paper that's unsafe so you should try to decrease and also doing that will decrease the shear force on the nib as well so the lower you can write the angle with the lower angle you can write with the safer it is for the nip but also keep in mind that different nibs are made to different uh, to flex different amounts so the fa number 15 for example does not flex as much as the number 10 so you have to keep that in mind when you're flexing and many times you will have the pens railroad that's because you basically separate the nib from the feed and there's no ink going so you're going to get railroading the solution to that is to give it a second for the ink to flow back and next time don't push as hard since i'm at it the alternative means of minimizing railroading say you're doing a writing session and you want to make sure your pen doesn't railroad is this take your nip dip it in here that's easy it dilutes the ink a little bit but definitely minimizes railroading then let a couple of drops fall and you'll see that there will be basically no railroading it kind of messes up the quality of the ink but you will see that railroading is gone and there's one more trick that will definitively fix the railroading in most of the pins and we can talk about that some other time so that is how i use the full flex nibs and give you a second example with the conkling endura this is my most favorite flex pin again no pressure on the way up pressure only on the way down very minimal angles very minimal angles and if you see sometimes i have unfortunately myself violated this principle is of not pressing at an angle for example if you watch me write letter c you'll see that i i do unfortunately have to <laughs> have to press at a little bit of angle but at that point what i do is i try to change my approach so that it it minimizes the pressure on the right time over time if you continuously do this the right time will be splayed up and it is not easy to fix that so i try to minimize that when possible the alternative to that is to turn the paper a little bit so if i'm writing a c the same c now i need to get the line variation i need to turn it turn the paper a few degrees and go like this there we go so that's with the flick snips i'm sure there's many other um, tips that are out there that you guys can share with me as well the one last thing that i want to say about the flex nibs is that uh, for the regular flex nibs fountain pens it's okay you can use them as we talked about before but if you're using a tipped very very sharp pen with a very extra extra fine tipping uh, even the weight of the pen may be too much and it may scratch the paper or collect fibers in that case and an all pointed calligraphy dip pens what you want to do is essentially make sure you have an under paper something cushiony and with the upstrokes essentially the paper needs to touch the pen as opposed to the pen going at the paper so uh, it takes a lot of practice I consider myself an advanced beginner but it's work in progress and every day is a good day when you write and uh, last category of pens I'd like to talk about is the pointed pens the the very sharp needle point and extra extra fine nibs uh, I just briefly talked about them and the principles are the same you want to hold at around 45 degree angle not vertical again although you can do that as long as you follow the principle of paper touching the nib and not nib touching the paper you can uh, use any of these pens but most of us don't do that and you don't always have an under cushion for the paper to do that so 
what I recommend doing with these needle point and sharp pointed fountain pens is to again have a low angle and then minimize the pressure. These pens should not be pushed on the paper at all. The other ones should also not be pushed much and but the other ones are forgiving. The needle point pens are not forgiving even if on downstroke if you try to put pressure you're going to have a, a uh, unpleasant feedback and that's not be a pleasurable writing experience so if you want to practice it'll be the, basically the paper touching the, the pen and this took me a long time I had a very 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 experienced expert ground this nib to a needle point and I had initially a little bit of difficulty even though I use pointed tipped uh, uh, dip pens this seems sharper than all of my pointed dip pens so I had a little bit of time learning this so I learned that these pens need to basically have the paper come to them and be very very light on the touch so feather like and they give amazing thin lines and let you practice your palmer skills and uh, Spencerian and so forth so this is I find that if you're into practice palmer method of writing a very extra extra fine nib such as ultra extra fine or point uh, ultra extra fine by platinum and the posting nib by pilot are very good um, to me this ground nib is the best but second to that is the platinum ultra extra fine and the pilot posting nib so those are my tips on writing with various kind of fountain pens of course i'd love to hear from you guys and see what you do and what tips you have for me and if you have any questions please do let me know and i hope to hear from you and i uh, hope to see you in the next video and i hope this video helps one or two people use their fountain pens in a safer way thank you for watching this goodbye